Hello Initiates, and welcome to the meditation activation for the first red root fireplace Muladhara Chakra. For the start of this meditation, come to a seated position, either in seated lotus position directly on Mother Gaia's floor, or if this suits your personal needs better, on the edge of a bed, as we will be in Savasana, or corpse pose, with a specific modification. And for those of you who may not be able to sustain this particular chakra activation pose, you are welcome to move onto the side that causes you less hip pain into fetal position, and back again to Savasana as you please. The goal is to be able to fully do the meditation in Savasana pose, but it is crucially important that you also slowly get there with ease and no strain. The name Muladhara comes from the Sanskrit word Mul, meaning base, and Adhara, meaning to adhere to join, to support. And now, as promised, is the knowledge that initiated a long string of initiates, from the Freemasons of today to the original Freemasons, to the man we call Jesus Christ, Jehoshua, to Pythagoras, Zoroaster, Noah, Enoch, and so on. It is knowledge that predates the Great Flood and will last beyond us. It is the most sacred knowledge and for the first time exclusively on occult secrets revealed. Women are going to be initiated in this knowledge and rites because this knowledge while abused and used by the secret brotherhood of priests belongs to everyone and specifically deny the woman for reasons you will come to see and understand. Understand that the human body is a dipole magnet with a negative charge south pole ruled by the moon located in the Muladhara Chakra this chakra lies right above the anus in the tip of the coccyx of the spine. The positive charged north pole lies in the center of the head in the pineal gland and is ruled by Jupiter. However, these two magnetic poles must manually be aligned north to south in us starting from the moon ruled south pole then to the jupiter ruled north pole and the whole point of the kundalini journey the kundalini journey aligns the polar charges and when done so like a bulb one becomes awakened superhuman and the meaning behind enlighten. The link between this Jupiter ruled North Pole and Moon ruled South Pole is the spine, whose vertebral gaps function like electric synapses that discharge electrical ionized currents, hitting one after the other building up and amplifying the charge as it rises, culminating in a very real and actual electrical spark, resulting in the middle of the brain. While this negative charged south pole is ruled by the maternal moon, the red root fireplace Muladhara Chakra itself is ruled by severe and strict 
Saturn. The ancients who initiated their lamps in the rites of this chakra encouraged them with eyes closed to envision the chakra as a grand ruby crystal palace adorned with decorations of the moon in all its phases. A ruby red moon palace the gatekeeper to this palace, however, is Saturn, encouraged in initiates to be seen as a sphinx. Saturn makes us suffer in order to learn the lessons we must in this life. He will keep trying to teach us until we learn our lesson, the onus being on oneself to end their own suffering by learning the harsh life lesson Saturn is trying to teach. Resisting the lesson makes the suffering persist. Stop the persistence and you drop the suffering. It is thus not Saturn making you suffer, but your own mind and thinking it so and symbolized by the ever cryptic riddle of the sphinx and called the granti or not or illusion of brahma when you realize the paradox and irony of suffering all illusion is dispelled unnodding you from the ties to suffering helping you reach Nirvana. When you drop the idea that Earth is a prison, the ruby red moon palace of the Muladhara Chakra opens up. In fact, it already and always was and will be open to you. You always had and will have free access to it. But recall, Saturn is over here trying to distract you with lessons you need to learn when the only lesson he is trying to teach you is that suffering lasts as long as you hold on to it. Meaning, suffering is the greatest distraction to bliss. But nothing new here. So, Instead of Saturn and all the suffering he is provoking, turn your head away from him and toward the ruby red moon palace of the loving and affectionate divine feminine manifested in you as the Muladhara Chakra. It is her deep feminine love, so nurturing in its divine power that all the ailments, sufferings, pains, and harsh lessons of Saturn get totally washed away, healed, cured, and purified. Entering the foyer of this divine feminine red ruby moon palace allows you to see straight upwards through the spine to the Jupiter world, divine masculine, Amethyst Purple Palace or Third Eye and Pineal Gland. Ruled by Jupiter, this North Pole has all the same characteristics and qualities as him. Merry, jolly, happy, fun, a party lover, a great big old fat man who comes bearing gifts. Sound familiar? Jupiter is the jolly old man of the North Pole who comes bearing gifts to all humanity and is manifested in our brains as the claustrum. Thus Jupiter is the claws in Santa Claus. And Santa, Saturn, together Saturn and Jupiter form the Santa Claus as we know him. 
as the punisher of naughty deeds, Saturn, and the gift bearer as rewards for the nice, Jupiter. Herein also lies the duality of the doctrine of karma, of work, action, and reaction. Everything in our electric universe is considered work because it takes and requires energy, that energy being electricity. Whether a thought, an emotion, or idea, it is all at first an electrical stimulation between two neural synapses in the brain that consume energy in generating that thought which produces a chemical called a hormone, or the action. The work is the neural electric synapses, the action, the hormone, and the reaction, karma, all of which fall under the realm of the red ruby moon palace of the Muladhara chakra, because this chakra is first and foremost karmic, not just your own personal karma you accrue throughout your life, whether good or bad. Data-based hormones are neither just good or bad, they just are, and some lead to better karma than others. However, karma is also tied to your mother and father and ancestral lineage, thus your family roots, and the everyday name for this chakra, the root chakra. This chakra is also your physical roots to earth, manifested as your feet, which physically cannot exist unrooted to earth and up to your ankles, shins, knees, thighs, and hips. Your bottom hemisphere is also a dipole magnet, as the right side is positive masculine charged and the left negative feminine charged and resembles the bottom hemisphere of the chromosome and shaped as an upper triangle, a symbol of the divine masculine. As this is the outer exterior manifestation of this magnet for the hermetic Kabbalian principle of gender the interior manifestation of this upper triangle is the feminized downward triangle and symbol of the divine feminine. Thus, the downward facing triangle of this chakra symbol as it roots one to earth. This earthen quality is represented by the four cornered square, an ancient symbol for earth as an equilateral square can be drawn connecting the four directions, or electric polarities, of Earth. Appropriately, the platonic solid associated with Earth is the 3D cube, and vice versa, as there is an implied square for every circle, a perfect circle encompasses each square, thus the central circle and the chakra symbol. Four leaves immediately flourish from this chakra, symbolizing the four spiritual rites unlocked by this chakra. The first, manana, the right to think and think for oneself. Second, sankalpa, the right to express your true identity. Third, vikalpa, the right to believe without doubt. And fourth, Atma Chintana, the right to be aware God is you. The next four symbolize the material birthrights unlocked by this chakra, being bliss, security, abundance, and prosperity. Together, they form eight petals to represent the eight directions of our 3D reality and karma, as in the figure 8 of the number itself, is encoded the action and reaction of karma. When one is imbalanced in this chakra, 
the archetype of the victim emerges and their adrenal glands are said to be highly active as these are associated with the muladhara chakra two small glands that sit on top of the kidneys they secrete steroidal hormones like cortisol and stress hormones like adrenaline today our society causes in every one of us an overstimulated adrenal gland as it responds to the constant state of stress, noise, fear, danger, hate, division, poverty, violence, and so on. In our bodies, we can take on our father's stress by holding it in our right hip to foot area or our mother's in our left hip to foot area. A well-balanced, restored and healed Muladhara Chakra embodies the loving archetype of the Divine Feminine. It is her red ruby moon palace you want to get into, isn't it? It is her who has every cure, remedy and elixir to wash away all your suffering. By simply opening up to the great love, maternal affection and everlasting warm nebulous embrace of Divine Feminine Mother. She gives all one needs to restore this chakra back into harmony. From the get-go at the time of our birth, our aggressive yet still divine masculine energy must be reeled in, dominated over, or it dominates over us and we are left with an over-aggressive society filled with anger, loneliness, and apathy. The reason for this is because the right hip joint of the Muladhara is ruled by Aries. Aries is fiery, aggressive, dominant, determined, and is manifested as the first root to bloom and the second movement of God in you. Just as there were seven movements or days, God moves in seven initial movements through you. The first one being this Aries ruled hip joint root called the Pingala. Its spearheading and charging motion dominates over the feminine Ida hip joint ruled by Ophiuchus, the sign of the Kundalini handler and of the ether element. Thus, the rotational direction of this first Muladhara Chakra is pulled in the direction of Aries, to the right. As it rises around the right, to the top and over to the left, the Aries ruled Pingala forces the rotational vortex of this first chakra to go left. In so doing, the vortex begins to seem, or rather, emit a sound from the swirling and vibrational vortex tuned to the musical octave note of C and the syllable LAM. Repeating the tone of LAM specifically 108 times unknots the ties or lingam of this chakra, which is this symbol the symbol of Kundalini and of Scorpio and depicts the three spiral climb up the coccyx the rising Kundalini must first make toward the Muladhara Chakra. 108 unlocks the relationship between Earth and Moon etched into time itself as the Moon keeps time through her four phases. During those four phases from new to waxing and full to waning it takes her 27 days to make one lunar orbital period or a rotation around Earth along the fixed constellational stars. 27 times 4 equals 108 and 108 are the numbers for the radius of the moon in miles, 1080. Thus 108 breaths unlocks the specific relationship between Earth and the Moon, 
and all of which is captured in the Buddhist mala, which you can purchase at the Occult Secrets Revealed Shop. And that is all the knowledge you will need to activate your first red root Muladhara Chakra, begin your Kundalini journey, ascend and attain enlightenment, or attain correct north-south pole alignments. Did you hear me mention anything about menstruation, sexuality, diet, rules? No. What I did reveal, however, is that Kundalini is hormonal. And Kundalini can only rise if it passes the cruel rules, repression, shame, and judgment of Saturn. Dropping that sphinx of a riddle and instead facing toward Jupiter, toward fun, party going, merriment, happiness, satisfaction, sensuality, sexuality, fornication. Whatever aligns with the expression of your true identity, which you have a right to. I also revealed the first red root chakra is encouraged in first degrees and lambs to be envisioned as a ruby red moon palace. Is that clearly not the feminine womb and menstruation itself? Furthermore, as our universe is conveyed through electricity and our blood is said to be the manifestation of this electricity, then that turns menstruation from a monthly bloody discharge to a monthly electric discharge. You have to ask yourself who would gain the most from villainizing and controlling this electric discharge? It's obvious. Those who don't have and can't use it, like the Brotherhood of Freemasonry, which is why if you are a woman listening to this, you are probably among the first to know and why they exert all their power these brotherhood secret priests of the cloak to control women and the feminine. Well, I think it's time for you to show them just what your power can do. If you are a woman or feminine, I implore you, raise your Kundalini on the full or new moon or whenever your menstruation occurs it is Kundalini electric discharge. It is the blood of Christos, of electricity and the moon. So let no one control your body. Is feminine worship and worship of the feminine not clearly the key to balancing the chakra and even entertaining the thought of ascending to begin with? If you dare do this climb, you better begin by praising her first before him, which bespeaks the importance of being like a child, because you are always a baby child in the eye of mother, no matter how old you are. Is upon her wondrous world every day, no matter how old you are, starting right here and now, like it's your first time ever, like a child. Reclaim your innocence. See with the eyes of wonder again. They will help you find Jupiter with clarity as well. Though, now knowing what you know because of Saturn, you should not be childish and dumb about your innocence. Thanks to Saturn, you now have boundaries. And that is all Saturn was trying to teach you that all you needed to do to end suffering was to have boundaries. Boundaries are not walls. It is the wisdom of knowing when suffering is rearing its head and not engaging with it. If you can't appreciate this delicate 
and pro-feminine message. You are not intellectually ready, and I suggest you confront your Saturnistic view on the feminine, because the only way to Jupiter's heart is by loving his counterpart, the Divine Feminine. And this warning includes women as well, for femininity exists in men. For also consider that these Masonic rites and rituals mention sexuality. No, God does not judge. Kundalini is in everyone, and the rise and ascension does not discriminate. It is available for everyone, of every walk of life. Because if you are a person, then you have a walk of life. And this Kundalini walks every path. And if you cast judgment, be aware. God only loves. And only devils cast judgment. And this path of the Kundalini journey is towards God. With that being said, let us now meditate and activate because by rule this journey is done with eyes closed. As such, it is also a very personal and inherently lonely journey, which is why you must trust yourself and why it is important we do it together. See God in each other with radical acceptance and supreme indifference and validate it in each other. When you validate another, you are validating God. The riddle of the Sphinx is solved, and the Kundalini journey is innately pro female and pro LGBTQ plus S, meaning plus straights, pro everyone. And yes, this is the knowledge Masonic rites use, but knowledge is neither good or bad, but all in how you use it. You are a five-pointed star, and that is holy to know. But the Pentagon, the five-pointed Masonic government building and devil temple, is the evil. Your fellow brother and sister of every walk of life is not the enemy. So choose wisely, because if you are liberal, don't think Kundalini votes. Democrat. Kundalini doesn't vote. It thrives regardless. Please click on the link in the description below to continue to the Masonic Rites New Flower Moon Meditation. And visit the Occult Secrets Revealed Shop for your Amrita Mala to begin unlocking the powerful magic of 108. And until next time, Trust and believe that it is okay to be you, the most beautiful you there ever was, there is, and that there ever will be. Because you are not a story that can be told twice, and there will never again be a stage for you to perform, but this one, right here, right now. So be you, the most beautiful you.